Welcome everyone. Um, we're going to get started in just a couple minutes. Give it a, a few minutes for everyone to complete joining. Hey guys, we'll just give it one more minute and then we'll go ahead and get started. All right, guys, let's go ahead and get started. Um, hello, and welcome to the How to Make More Revenue Upfront webinar. We're really excited to have you guys join us today. Um, my name is Heather Ezel, and I work on Eventbrite's marketing team. And my role is to specifically help our event creators like yourself to learn about how to get the most out of the platform. So we're really glad that you're here with us today. So a few housekeeping items before we get started. Um, the first is that this webinar will be recorded and will be emailed to you following today's session. So feel free um, to listen in and then you can take notes later or however you want to do that. Um, the second is that um, we would like to request for you to please submit any questions or comments you may have via the chat tool and we'll try our best to answer them at the end. Uh, note that all participants will be muted during the webinar. As we're speaking about how you can make more revenue from your events today, we'll cover some exciting topics such as ticket strategy, add-ons, sales distribution, reporting and analytics, and event promotion plans. Uh, we'll also be leaving some time, as I said, at the end for a little live Q&A. I'm joined today by Shireen Nixadat, who will be diving into the details of these topics with me. Shireen is a senior technical customer success manager here at Eventbrite, and she helps guide some of our largest clients through their biggest challenges every day. Shireen has been with Eventbrite for three and a half years, and she currently resides in Oakland, California. Welcome, Shireen. Thank you, Heather. Hey, guys. Thanks so much for having me. I'm happy to join everyone today. Um, and I'm looking forward to digging into the topics we've outlined for today's webinar. As a side note, if you don't already work with the TCSM, our shorthand for Technical Client Success Manager, and you think it might be helpful for your business, just reach out to your main point of contact at Eventbrite or to our support team to upgrade your service package. Thank you, Shereen. So our first topic is about ticket strategy. And as a quick icebreaker for the team, we wanted to begin by understanding your current ticketing strategy. So please use the polling feature to answer the following question. On average, how many ticket options do you typically offer? Give me a few more seconds here. Great. So it looks like it is uh, a tie, it's toss up between an average of two to three ticket types for your events. That's great. Awesome, thank you, Heather. 
Cool. So kicking off today's webinar, let's talk a little bit about ticketing strategy, which encompasses two elements, the types of tickets you're selling and the price of those tickets. When thinking about ticketing strategy, we always advise creating multiple ticket types to help drive revenue. You can employ a tiered packages approach, which involves varied pricing that represent different experiences at your event, or you can think about a tiered pricing approach where you charge different prices for the same experience. Tiered packages considers that different attendees might be drawn to different offerings and perks at your event. Some of the most common varieties include general admission, VIP, and early entry ticket types. An early entry ticket type might actually just be your standard GA package with access to the event venue, say, one hour ahead of the crowd. An attendee who values shorter lines and the appeal of being a first comer might spend a little more on this offering while your expenses stay virtually the same. Tiered pricing, on the other hand, matches segments of your attendee base at varying price sensitivities. As your event gets closer, prices go up, incentivizing thriftier attendees to purchase sooner rather than later. These stages are generally coined as pre-sale, early bird, general on sale, and last call ticket tiers. When it comes to tiered pricing, you could base your transition on transition stages on quantity. So for example, we're allocating 500 tickets to the pre-sale ticket type, and when they're sold out, we're moving on to early bird. Or you could base it on date and time. On June 1st at 12 p.m. noon, we're gonna switch over from pre-sale to early bird. In either scenario, you're effectively incentivizing attendees to buy earlier. Another element to consider when it comes to tiered pricing is visibility. You can choose to have all tickets visible at once with only one on sale at a time. This makes it abundantly clear to attendees that prices will go up and openly advertises those price hikes. Or you can choose to have each ticket tier on sale and visible at specific times. This gives you greater flexibility to adjust prices of future ticket tiers based on the demand and also to assess how quickly the earlier tiers are even selling out. Another important component of your ticketing strategy is determining that rollout timing. First, you're gonna to wanna to make sure your on-sale cycle is anywhere from eight to 14 weeks. And this is gonna de depend on your event and your previous on-sale cycle durations. You need enough runway to effectively tease, launch, and promote your ticket tiers. You want each tier, aside from your general on-sale, to be available for at least one to two weeks. It's important to message this time limitation to drive urgency, for example, you have one more week to lock in your early bird tickets before prices increase. You can do this on your various social media channels or via email marketing campaigns. So we've chatted through a handful of different options to consider, but just remember, it's important to be strategic and monitor the results of your testing. Pick and choose specific ticket type strategies that are best suited for your event audience versus employing all strategies at once. In the vein of keeping your ticket offerings streamlined and strategic, an alternative way to account for price sensitivities or limited offerings is through the use of promotional codes. Use them as a thank you for previous attendees or special partners and also as a way to see what resonates with your audience. So first up is attendee loyalty. A common use of promotional codes is to reward returning event goers. Consider elevating your event's loyalty by offering past attendees exclusive offers. If you're looking to drive repeat attendance year over year, this could mean providing a small discount to those folks. And if your event is already in high demand, this could simply be access to your tickets ahead of the general public. Outside of past attendees, you're able to leverage promo codes to extend special discounts to targeted groups. Think promotional partners, schools, organizations, etc. You can create one generic code with either limited or unlimited uses, or get super granular by uploading a list of unique codes and their associated use limits. Another good use of promo codes is to measure the effectiveness of your marketing efforts. Use a general promo code per campaign when creating static ads or flyers or, or when working with influencer partners and or promoters. Always remember, just be strategic with your discounts. They should always be segmented and time limited, time limited as you don't wanna train attendees to expect them. So now that we've chatted through leveraging promotional codes and some of the ways to make your ticket type offerings work for you, let's talk about how to think about pricing your event. Everyone's always interested in this one. <laughs> Ticket sales are the top resource for revenue around, for around 70% of event creators. So how can you choose pricing that doesn't scare off event goers, but also adequately represents the value of your event and nets you a positive profit? Some ways to strategize around this are to calculate your bottom line, know your value, and research events in similar markets. So when calculating your bottom line, you need to think about how much money you'll need to be profitable. The only way to answer that is to understand how much money you're gonna spend. And while budgeting isn't exactly the funnest activity, it's critical to improving your event's return on investment. 
This is where having an overall event budget is table stakes. Your event budget should reference historical data where possible, and it should map out all of your expenses down to the detail so you can make informed decisions. Using a simple ROI equation, reconsider investments that won't have significant return and edit your spend from there. So knowing your value. When thinking about how to set ticket prices, attendee perception is key. If you've hosted this event in the past and tickets sold out immediately, there could be room to raise pricing a touch. If you've discounted tickets and they're still not selling, it could indicate that your pricing is still above your attendees perceived value. So outside of historical reference, the most important piece here is to identify the line items at your event that drive value for your attendees and to benchmark your value against your competition. One definitive way to get this feedback is to pull your attendees post event to learn where you're providing value and where you're falling short. Last but not least, do your research. <laughs> Whether you're a first time creator or you've got some experiences under your belt, it's always a good idea to explore similar events in the same or comparable markets to help inform how you price. Thanks, Shireen. So before we dive into our next, next topic, we'd like to know from you, what types of non-admission items do you offer attendees in addition to tickets? Give you a few seconds here. Great, okay, so it looks like uh, we have a, a lot of variation across the board. Um, no surprise that the, the most common answer was food. Um, we also have experiences and drinks and merchandise, but it's a little bit all over the board. So that's great, that's what we're gonna dive into next. Awesome guys, it sounds like a good handful of you are offering additional items at your live experiences. So our add-ons product is gonna be perfect for you. So non-admission items or add-ons are another great way to add value to your live experience and also lock in additional revenue. Add-on offerings are quickly becoming a critical part of live experiences as they can be the differentiator between your event and other similar events. Think of add-ons as all of your events extras or ancillary perks that fall outside of just entry or admission revenue. Eventbrite's add-ons tool supports the promotion of these items, making it possible to purchase them alongside entry tickets during the normal checkout flow. This can be anything from food and drink vouchers to parking or transportation, exclusive access rights to merchandise or experiences within an experience like meet and greet opportunities. The sky's really the limit here. By promoting these supplemental options ahead of your event, you'll get a better idea of the demand on these extras and can provision for that inventory and or planning involved. Additionally, with our new and improved add-ons tool, it's easy to keep inventory for admission and non-admission items separate. For example, if you're working with a fixed capacity for your venue, items added in as add-ons versus tickets won't count against your event's capacity. Best of all, quantities of add-ons sold and their associated revenue can be optionally included or excluded from several reports in the Eventbrite backend, making reconciliation of your profit fairly simple and straightforward. Here's a quick look at what the add-ons tool looks like in the product, both in the create flow and on your event landing page visible to attendees. It's important to note that in order to use our add-ons tool, you must be in our new create experience, which looks like the screenshot shown here. If you don't have the new create experience yet, just reach out to your customer success representative or to the Eventbrite support team. So looking at the left side of the menu, you'll wanna to navigate to the ticket section. Once there, click on the add-ons heading and create add-ons button to create your first extra. In the pop-out section, you're gonna enter in the details associated with your add-on. Some of the new options you'll observe in the pop-out are setting up variations, which are subcategories of a certain add-on that all share a max quantity. For example, if you have a max of 300 parking spots that you wanna sell, but you'd like to allocate 50% to be sold online and 50% to be sold at the door, you can create two add-on variations that share the same inventory. Other helpful features of the add-ons tool include the ability to add an image per add-on. Visuals always help to entice purchase and offer more detail to your attendees. You're also able to toggle between including a scannable QR code for redemption or not. Add-ons can do everything that a ticket can do, 
So discount and access codes work with them, and so do custom on-sale schedules. Also included in the creation flow is a field for custom confirmation language. This is the perfect place for any important callouts or directions or even terms and conditions. An important final step is always to test out the purchase flow for yourself. So here you'll see a screenshot of what the checkout experience looks like in our new embedded checkout widget. You can see that there are headings labeled as tickets and add-ons, which are actually totally customizable. You can update these headings from within the settings section of the ticket screen. Just note that there is a 48 hour, 30, <laughs> excuse me, 48 hour character limit on these fields. Thank you so much. Okay, so here comes another question for you. Which channel is driving the majority of your ticket sales? Hey, great. All right, looks like uh, our biggest channel for ticket sales is email, um, followed shortly by Facebook. That's great. We're gonna talk about that a little bit here following up. Cool, so that brings us to distribution, um, which is another highly important consideration for your revenue strategy. In some simpler terms, distribution addresses where your attendees are purchasing tickets for your event. So having a broad distribution strategy helps to reach different types of audiences and provides the opportunity to meet your attendees where they're already spending time while also simplifying their path to purchase. By using our reporting and analytics tools, you can easily identify which of your sales and distribution channels are the strongest and which need more attention. We'll spend a little more time on that a little further in, um, so just wait on that. So a couple of powerful distribution tools that make the ticket purchase process as frictionless as possible are the Embedbrite Embedded Checkout Widget and our native purchase integration with Facebook. So as pictured to the left here, Eventbrite's Embedded Checkout Widget allows your customers to complete an end-to-end -end purchase experience without ever leaving your website. This widget is an optimized checkout flow, which includes a language selector, which allows attendees to self-select the language they'd like populated in the modal. Creators leveraging our embedded checkout widget benefit from stronger SEO as attendees spend more time on their sites and also enjoy the ability to maintain brand control for their ticket offering. The embedded checkout widget coding can also be placed on your partner's websites to open up additional storefronts and diversify your distribution strategy. For qualifying events, the widget coding is populated in the back end of your event page via the, via the invite and promote section under website integrations. Note that the widget can be placed on any HTTPS certified website. Our native purchase on Facebook integration, shown to the right here on mobile, was built to enable organizers to sell their Eventbrite tickets directly on Facebook. It allows attendees to complete an end-to-end -end purchase directly from Facebook with no redirect to the Eventbrite landing page. Event creators love it because the integration helps them sell more tickets by reaching consumers where they are. They're able to reach more people by boosting the discoverability of their event by automatically being deemed a Facebook official event and they save time promoting their Facebook event by importing event details just once. On top of all of this, we've actually found that events with tickets available to purchase on Facebook drive 2x the conversions compared to those which direct to, redirect to Eventbrite. Enabling native purchases via Facebook is entirely organic. It's simply opening up more sales doors for potential attendees and supports peer-to-peer -peer promotion. Through our integration, creators are also able to take advantage of paid promotion using Facebook's ads manager to create event ads and custom audiences. Find new high intent audiences, target lookalike audiences, and increase your marketing reach. Note that you can track the purchases that occurred on Facebook, both in event reports or in the analytics tool via the sales channel view. As referenced a little earlier, a key component to making more revenue is being able to track where your revenue is actually coming from, right? With Eventbrite's reporting and analytics tools, we can help you identify where your most lucrative sources of revenue stem from, as well as your biggest opportunities. Through the Eventbrite.com backend, you can access a multitude of preset event reports, as well as the analytics dashboard seen here. Both event reports and the analytics tool can be found under the Analyze section on the left-hand menu. 
A couple of canned event reports of note include the sales summary, which can be used for easy reconciliation, the sales by ticket type report, which can help track sales for specific admission or non-admission tickets, and the promotion code usage report to track those campaigns we discussed earlier. The analytics dashboard, on the other hand, visualizes your data on sales, attendees, traffic, and or sales channels. It also offers filters to pull in data cross events. On top of that, if you want to group event data or filter down to a specific ticket type, you can do it in that analytics dashboard. Spend some time in the analytics tool digging into which sales channels are driving the most revenue for your event. You'll find insights into the performance of your own channels, such as widgets that you place on your website, any orders placed through Eventbrite Organizer app, direct traffic from your website, and any conversions via email invite tools. In addition to this, you can see how Eventbrite is moving the needle on your ticket sales. Categorized as Eventbrite channels in the tool, this includes things like search and browse in Eventbrite.com's global marketplace of events, our related event suggestions and abandoned cart emails, and ticket sales that converted via integrations with our partners like Facebook and Instagram. Throughout your on-sale, it's key to assess performance so that you can optimize your strategy. Keep an eye on Eventbrite's analytics to assess how effective campaigns are in driving sales spikes. And most importantly, keep testing what works best with your audience. For those of you that are on the go, like many event creators, our organizer app is another useful tool for keeping tabs on your sales and event data in real time. With our latest iOS release, 8.10.0, the organizer dashboards can now be filtered by specific ticket types, either admission or add-ons. This is super useful for events that have multiple check-in points so that staff can filter and see only the relevant ticket types coming to that entrance. You'll notice in the new layout that add-on sales and check-ins are also clearly broken out from admissions so all of your counts are accurate. All right, last poll of the day, guys. How confident are you with your event promotion strategy? Okay, it looks, uh, looks a little bit varied here too, but it looks like most of you are pretty confident with your event promotion strategy. Awesome, that's really encouraging to hear. Um, we're just gonna broadly uh, address that today, um, promotional strategy and kind of like an overall look at it. So having an overall strategy with clear steps mapped out is incredibly important to achieving event success and growth. Here we have a high level overview of the elements to consider in your promotional strategy. So first up is setting goals for your event. To begin, goal setting is always a great starting point when thinking about your overall event strategy. Are ticket sales your most important indicator of success? Or maybe you wanna increase overall revenue? Perhaps you're looking to expand your event to new audiences and increase your marketing lists. Whatever your event goals are, be sure you identify them and that they're measurable so you can track your progress. Reviewing sales from previous, previous events is another great way to benchmark your growth. For example, if you observe the typical on-sale spike, mid-sales cycle plateau, and last-minute spike, think about where there are opportunities to drive new spikes this year. Up next is creating ticket tiers. We recommended earlier that having multiple ticket types available appeals to a broader audience. There is no hard and fast rule for creating ticket types, but we discussed some of the most common variations earlier. Remember, experimentation and tracking results are key. Think about who your attendees are and what they care about. Try to identify simple value adds like early entry or exclusive VIP access that could add appeal and deepen the event experience for them. It's also important to be aware of choice paralysis in this step. Offering too many options may actually have a negative impact on your sales by overwhelming folks in the purchase flow. Just remember to be strategic with the number of ticket types and as an alternative to creating new ticket types, remember that you can always employ discount codes to share with certain target audiences. Assigning pricing hand in hand with creating ticket tiers is considering the pricing for those tickets. Event organizers sometimes make the mistake of determining ticket prices solely based on the cost of the event, which is also known as cost-based pricing. While this isn't an is an important consideration, it should also be weighed against the perceived value of your event to attendees. 
Whether you're throwing an event for the first time or bringing back a successful event another year, doing some competitive analysis is always a wise move. Try to get a sense of what similar events in the area are charging to give you an idea of the range your ticket should fall in. And then just touching on determining your rollout timing. As a reminder, just remember that your on-sale cycle is anywhere from eight to 14 weeks, and that's gonna depend on your event and the previous on-sale cycle durations. You need that runway to effectively tease, launch, and promote. If you're gonna employ ticket tiers, try and have each specialty tier available for one to two weeks. And as, as a reminder, you know, drive urgency by messaging the time limitation. So designating attendee segments. This is all about your email communication strategy. Once you've mapped out your ticket tiers, you'll wanna sure, be sure to release them strategically. Before you go on sale, decide before you go on sale what your broader communication cadence will look like. Will you notify everyone about your early bird or only once general on-sale tickets are available? We suggest sending a segmented email to your list of previous ticket buyers to let them be the first to know about the pre-sale. Not only does this reward your most loyal fans, but it can be used as an incentive to drive email capture. For example, join our list to become an insider and you'll be the first to access pre-sale tickets. Your early bird tier is a great time to activate partners. Create an access code for each partner that unlocks the early bird tier and encourage them to share this with their followers and subscribers. Not only will you get your event in front of a wider audience, but tracking the access code will allow you to measure the value of the partnership. Over the course of your on sale, you may see a larger number of email subscribers who open or click on an email, but do not convert. Consider sending this segment a limited time incentive to purchase such as a special discount code. So choosing your channels. We know that email is 40X more effective at acquiring new customers than Facebook or Twitter, and that email marketing drives more conversions than any other marketing channel, including search and social. Identify the channels you'll, you'll be focused on leveraging to promote your events as well as your ticket tiers. For example, you may wanna leverage email only for an exclusive pre-sale accessible to past attendees only whereas you may use Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter to focus on featuring your lineup, talent, vendors, sponsors, and any engagement-focused content. A pro tip here is to create a marketing and communications calendar to map out what needs to be executed on each channel each week so that you can plan ahead. So tapping partners, vendors, and sponsors. Create a templated partner activation kit that includes your event details, relevant links, approved creative and pre-scripted content that your partners can simply copy and paste into their own social posts or emails. Customize it for each partner to match their voice. A corporate partner may have a very different tone than an artist. You also wanna draft two to three sample Facebook posts, Instagram posts, and tweets respectively. Not only does this activation kit increase the likelihood that partners post about their involvement in your event, but it also ensures that only correct and pre-approved links and details are being shared. Finally, measure your results and optimize. Through each step, you'll wanna keep an eye on how each of your strategic levers are performing. If you see certain ticket, ty ticket types selling faster than others, it may be worth offering a targeted discount on the underperforming tickets. If partner codes aren't being redeemed, you can request that they promote it again or through different channels. Post-event surveys are another tool that can be helpful in evaluating event success from an attendee's perspective. It could be as simple as an NPS survey asking if they would recommend your event to a friend with a field for other comments. To tie a bow on all of this, I wanted to share with you an example of how these strategies have been implemented and have driven real life success for one of our event creators. Kate Levenstein, pictured here, is the brains and CEO behind Cannonball Productions. They do super engaging and fun food and beverage events across the country. Most notable among their events is their Bacon and Beer Classic series. So using Eventbrite's on-sale strategy advice, the Cannonball team focused on ramping up pre-launch marketing initiatives for their fourth annual Bacon and Beer Classic in Chicago. When they launched, they emailed their list closer to the event and at a time that attendees were most likely to buy based on Eventbrite data. The immediate impact that Cannonball saw was that 150 more tickets were sold on launch day in 2018 versus 2017. There's a snippet from Kate here, but I'll read the full quote for you all because it's one of my favorite strategic success stories. Kate said, 
For our fourth annual Bacon and Beer Classic at Soldier Field in Chicago, Eventbrite recommended that we send the launch email at peak purchase times, offer special incentives and secret unlocks to past attendees, and focus on list health year round to make sure our launch email was reaching an engaged audience. Using this advice, we focused on ramping up our pre-launch marketing initiatives like never before. We ran re-engagement campaigns to win back emails on our mailing list and drastically ramped up our paid and organic email collection campaigns leading up to launch. When we launched, we hit our list a little closer to the event than we did a previous year and at a time they were most likely to buy based on Eventbrite data. As a result, we saw 150 more tickets sold on launch day in 2018 versus 2017. For 2019, we decided to do an insider unlock for 2018 attendees and had 155 past attendees tickets before launch day. This was our strongest yet by a long shot. I can't emphasize how much mapping out our big picture on sale timeline has helped us keep markets engaged year round to result in a more power packed launch. That's great, thank you. All right, so the final question that should be on your mind today, and this is not a polling question, just as a little bit of a takeaway. So what are you going to do with the revenue that you've made, knowing all that we've talked about today? Finally, it does look like we have some time for live Q&A. Looks like we have a few questions coming in from the chat that we will address now. Looking at the questions here, okay. Is there a limit to the number of add-on items I can build in my event? Great question. So in our classic merchandise tool, we did have a limit of six items per event page. That said, the good news is that there is no limit to the number of add-ons you can have in a single event. But as I said earlier, just remember, be strategic. It's important not to overwhelm your purchasers with too many options. Great. Thank you, Shereen. All right, next question. What are the most common add-on items that you see event planners selling? Well, honestly, we see all over the board, like all different types of events have different offerings that they wanna kind of pepper into their live experiences. Um, but we've seen a lot of meet and greets, that's a big piece of it, merchandise, advanced beer tickets, um, Anything like food and beverage wise, like you can redeem it on site and you, you get your purchase out of the way. Um, we've also seen like uh, experiences within experiences. So like all sorts of things, whether it's a meet and greet or, you know, an extra, an add-on works for it. Great, and it looks like one of our webinar attendees mentioned that they also use add-ons for a putting challenge. That's great, cool. All right, next question. Are there settings for add-on items to be purchased with specific ticket types? So at this time, add-ons can be purchased independently from any of your admission tickets. However, you can include information in the description if you wanna drive attendees to purchase admission ticket along with add-ons. Cool, okay. Have some more questions here. Um, you mentioned that we need to be using new create to have access to add-ons. What is that exactly and how do we make sure we have access to it? Great question. Yeah, absolutely. So our new create experience is an end-to-end -end event creation experience on our native apps and web. Note that new create is actually built on top of a flexible and scalable product foundation. And this is where our team will be innovating and iterating on our product feature set. So that's code for all the cool new stuff is gonna be built in new create. Uh, all creators should actually have access to the new create experience already. Uh, the only scenario you would automatically be reverted back to classic create in is if you need to use repeating events, um, but that will be at parity soon. If you're a sales client who may have been whitelisted out of the new create experience, just contact your Eventbrite representative and they can get, help you get access. All right, next question. Could you explain add-on variations again and maybe provide more examples? Yeah, totally. So you can think of add-on variations as 
oh, excuse me. You can think of added add on va add on variations as like anything that has like a finite number of uses. So the example we gave earlier was parking, right? You only have 300 parking spots and you want to offer them before the event and you also want to offer them on the day of the event. Um, another example are like transportation. If you want to sell shuttle rides, for example, before the event and you only have a certain number of seats on each shuttle, um, add on variations would be a great, great tool to leverage. Great. Okay. Um, okay, it looks like another question. Can you have two separate times for the start of event? Say VIP at 7 p.m. and GA at 8 p.m. Great question. Uh, so at this time, event pages can only be set up with a single event start time. You know, that said, if you want to offer your VIP attendees earlier access, you can message this to them through the custom confirmation messaging, which is found in order confirmation settings. We also send a custom 48 hour reminder email and that lets them know when and where they can check in. Great. All right, looks like one last question here. Wondering if there is something similar to the Facebook integration with Instagram. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we do have an active integration with Instagram where you can have a get tickets button linked to either an organizer profile, um, which is a great example if you're promoting a handful of events versus just like one event, you might want to drive them to your organizer profile. But you can also use that get tickets button on Instagram to promote a specific event page and drive sales directly there from Instagram. Uh, we do have a great help center article for more details on how to get it set up. But I know that one of the requirements is having a Instagram business profile. Great. Um, looks like we already answered those. Okay, looks like that might be all of the questions that we have today. Um, if you do have any more questions, please feel free to reach out. Um, we'll be looking back through the chat and the Q&A features, um, and we'll be sure to follow up with you after. As a reminder, um, we will be sending out this recording after this, um, this webinar, so look out um, on your email for that. And we just want to say thank you guys so much for joining us today. It's been a real pleasure to have you. Um, we hope that we were able to answer some of your questions and give you a little bit of knowledge on how to drive some more revenue for your event. Thank you guys so much. Have a good rest of your day. Thanks, guys.